I don't say this lightly when I say this, but William Murphy may be the worst preacher ever. Hard work about this Gucci. I done sold everything but booty. But let's talk about it here on All Things Theology. Cue my theme music. All Things Theology, All Things Theology, we chop it up properly without an apology. Gotta give that theology to God, hollow because this is how we do it at All Things Theology. Yo, grace and peace. Welcome back to an episode of All Things Theology, where this is your host, K Dub, and today we, we gotta talk about it, y'all. No, 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 no. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Boy, ain't no way, boy. I'm I'm already in the in this mindset because William Murphy may be the worst pastor I've ever heard. And and that's saying a lot because we have covered a lot of bad theology on this channel. With that said, let's bring you with a term many of you are familiar with, but some are not. The word of the day is eisegesis. Go on and put a fire emoji in the chat if you're not down with the eisegesis. Eisegesis literally means to lead into, which means the interpreter injects his own ideas, one could say opinions, into the text, making it mean whatever he or she wants. Eisegesis is a mishandling of the text and often leads to misinterpretation. We see that a lot of times where people will funny, uh, a good one we've done on this channel channel is right. The term or the name Benjamin turns into some kind of, uh, you know, theology of how one can get the cheddar, how one can get. She take my money. Yeah. Well, I'm in need. How one can get the money. Right. How one can get the money. So many people do this in the Bible. You know, they'll they'll do things. Yes, like, or, like I'm thinking that's some type of arsonist. Yeah, they will, you know, gaslight. They'll, you know, make a text mean something that it doesn't mean. And if we don't accept it, we're the ones who are quenching the spirit. You know, you might have heard something like that. You might have heard something to that nature. But let's see it because this sermon was bad. Um, William Murphy has been doing a sermon series to literally it's I mean, we're going to find this out in the video in order to get people to give. You know, so as he's trying to gaslight them to give more money and the sermon series is literally called scared money. Don't make money. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Yeah, that's the sermon title. And it's really conjoling them to give to give more money. He's been preaching this literally every sermon I've heard of. William Murphy has been to conjole the people to give money. Why don't you put some money, put some dollar bill emojis in the chat if you're watching and let's get into this. Come on, Proverbs chapter 18 and verse number 16 real quick. Let me hurry up here. Hey man, tell, look at your neighbor. Tell him this going to be a free week for you. Mm -hmm. Free week for you. Proverbs chapter 18, verse number 16. Put your attention on the screen. Let's read together. A gift opens doors. Let's read together. A gift and it gives access to the great. I'm going to stop right there for the sake of time. I want to talk about doors and rooms. Now, how I've always understood this text, we're about to hear his explanation of this text is and, and he reads from a he's, he's very dependent on the message, very looser translations. But uh, it says a man gives a man's gift makes room for him and brings him before the great. And how I've always took this, how I've, how I've took this verse to mean is that, yeah, money can take you places you wouldn't go. It can give you opportunities. It's not even saying it's a positive thing or negative. It's just a statement of fact. Well, William Murphy takes this text. You can always tell when he gives a new verse he's never read before because <laughs> he preaches on that. Uh, and, you know, he thinks he's teaching what he's teaching. But he's going to take this verse to essentially mean God's going to take your places. You're never going to go. Why? Because you're going to give the gift. <laughs> you guys think I'm joking? Get ready. This I mean, this is how the sermon started off. Um, and he could preach on this text. There's nothing about wrong about preaching on this text. But we're going to see a lot of. A lot of gas light. I'm thinking that's some type of arsonist. So let's get into our next clip here. We're exactly a week away from Palm Sunday. It's the Sunday that for the past 18 years or so, 
we have brought to God what is called a first fruit offering. Romans chapter 8 verse 29 calls Jesus the firstborn among many brethren. And it is with this same grace that the grace that Jesus offered up his life as a gift, as a ransom, and as a payment, if you will, that we will offer to God a gift that we believe will bring us out and bring us in to a better place. Notice, the giving that the Father gave in sending the Son, Jesus, is the same. Look, I want you to hear what he said. Let's go back. Let's go back. Because what you're about to hear is some madness. No, 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 no. He's comparing the father's giving the son in the same way you give to get your right. The father sent the son to get us to a better place. You're going to give your gift tithing. Right. And that's going to get you to a better place. I want you to listen again. Listen and again with clearer ears. It's called a first fruit offering. Romans chapter 8 verse 29 calls Jesus the firstborn among many brethren. And it is with this same grace that the gra same grace that Jesus offered up his life as a gift, as a ransom, and as a payment, if you will, that we will offer to God a gift that we believe will bring us out and bring us in to a better place. So he's comparing the father giving the son with our giving, our, our gift. <laughs> I mean, you, you know, I, I know this is many of the false teachers. They love to compare Jesus to a tithe, right? You have that from Robert Morris, Mike Todd. You know, they got a lot of... I got bread in my pocket. 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 If you're watching, go and drop some bread in the chat. Because that's what these pastors want. They want that bread. But yeah, Jesus is not a mere tithe, nor is he even similar. The father gave a greater gift than your little 10% tithe. God told me to speak over you that you're not just coming into a better place, but you're about to step into a wealthy place. Somebody say a wealthy place. Now, the rest of this sermon is literally going to be him promising them uh things that you don't have to be a want you that you don't have to be a christian to want right i mean you don't have to want you don't have to be a christian to want millions billions of dollars to be successful but that's literally this sermon let me give you the rundown on this sermon it's literally going to be him promising things unbelievers already want i'm tired of your church you know but this is no yeah, again, he's going to promise them everything they want. And, and of course, like a good false convert, they're going to love it. But check this next clip out. Don't mess with my mic, y'all. Just leave it alone. Look, somebody say scared money don't make money. Say it again. Scared money don't make money. And let me settle this for you once and for all, because some kind of way the devil got it in your spirit that God's not concerned about you making money. God told me to tell you, you need to settle this in your spirit that God wants you to make money. Do me a favor. Touch the person on your left and your right. Tell them God wants you to make money. Now, let me just say this. I agree with what he said. Yeah, God wants you to make money. He wants us to work, to be able to provide, have a living for ourselves. This isn't the bad thing, but watch the shift. Watch the shift, he goes from God wants you to make money. That's or, right. I'm thinking that's some type of arsonist. To God wants you to make money to God wants you to be rich. Um, how dare you? Well, let's keep a listening. Write it down, Letitia. God wants you. I need somebody talking back to me in the balcony. God wants you to make money money he you gotta settle that in your soul he above all things his his desire for you is that you would prosper and be in good health god boy ain't no way boy boy ain't no way boy so above all things god's chief concern is our material living i thought above all things 
it was repentance, faith in the son. I mean, but notice he's so materially rooted with his Gucci cardigan on that he can't even see properly. Right. He's all in his head. But it was just my imagination. You know, it's all about the material physical life for William Murphy. You're healthy and broke. God wants you in good health and watch this. God said, tell him, I don't just want them righteous. I want them rich. <laughs> Richie righteous over here. What is this guy talking about? No, 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 no. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Boy, ain't no way, boy. God wants you rich and righteous, but notice the dichotomy he sets up. It's either broke or rich, as if there's not <laughs> stuff in the middle. I'm, I'm saying this. God, the, God's, your, the, God's chief concern is not your... <laughs> oh, check this out. God's chief concern is not your... I got bread in my Gonna put a bread in a pocket. Yeah, God's God's chief concern is not your wallet. It's your it's your righteousness, your your imputed righteousness, right? Second Peter talks about this. He who knew no sin became sin on behalf, right? But but again, all you have is materialism being preached by William Murphy. You don't have to be a Christian. Guys, this is this is what upsets me so much. This charlatan in the pulpit is is just blaspheming about that which he doesn't know about. Um, how dare you? And yet the alleged people. Yes, I'm saying alleged. The alleged people are eating this up. This is not Christianity. Hey, everybody can't receive this, but but if if your faith grabbed a hold of that when I said it, just just jump up and holler. God want me rich. God, God want me rich. Huh? Yeah, of course they receive this because their chief concern is not does the Bible teach us? Because because guess what? None of this had to do with the proverb he actually read. See, a lot of teachers do this. They do this teaching where they. Uh, they'll they'll quote a verse and for 30 minutes, they'll just be talking as if what they're saying has something to do with the verse. When it doesn't, everyone should do this to this man. Unfollow me. You need to get out of there. Get up out of there. Because this has nothing to do with the Bible. Again, we should say if the Lord permits if God gives you more providentially, more money, to that we say amen. But if he doesn't, we cannot be covetous. I mean, this a lot of these prosperity teachers literally are teaching these people, their congregation, the alleged people of God, to be covetous. That's all this message is, is one big sinful message of how to be covetous. I don't, I don't know what God wants for you, but God... God wants me rich. He, he wants me to have more than what I need, enough to give away, and some left over to put away, not just for me, but for my family. I'm trying to tell y'all God's trying to reposition you so that you can represent his interests in the earth. God's interest in the earth. Yeah, it's for you to be rich. But, you know, he says God wants you to have more than what you need. But is that what the Bible says? First Timothy six says differently. It says, but with godliness, but godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world and we cannot take anything out of the world. But if we had food and clothing with these, we will be content. It sounds like a whole to totally different message <laughs> that William Murphy is preaching because he's not preaching from the Bible. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Boy, ain't no way, boy. This is his own message you know out of her life out of her life god's trying to reposition you so that when your family looks at you they looking at god y'all god no 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 what bro what are you talking about man? boy ain't no way boy boy ain't no way boy um how dare you 
go on and put some eye emojis in the chat because he he wants them to say when they looking at us, they looking at God. What? What is this man talking about? Turn off the lights. I'm tired of these I am tired of these false teachers. No, sir. Well, no, sir. When they look to us, what do we do? We say, look to him. No, 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 no. Get your eyes off me. But notice what they're looking at you for. They're not even looking at you because you're a light. They're not looking at you because you're righteous. They're looking at you because you're rich. <laughs> you don't got to be a Christian to want, want that, to look at other people because of what they have. What, 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 what did uh, Acts 3 say? Silver and gold we do not have. When they looked at the apostles, when they looked at the apostle Peter, silver and gold, sir, I don't have. But what I have, Good God. we give to you Christ. This is this is incoherent to the biblical message. Says, I, I want to be able to entrust you with my agenda. That, that's why not so you can get you a Gucci sweater. Not so <laughs> while he has on the Gucci sweater. What is this man talking about? <laughs> my goodness. No, 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 no. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Go on and put a shirt in the chat because this man is this, this he's like a walking hypocrite. He's literally got the Gucci sweater on. I can get you some Gucci shoes. He, he said, you're going to get that too. But God said, that ain't, <laughs> that ain't what I'm about. What I'm about is making sure that you have enough influence and affluence that when you start talking, people start listening. God says some of y'all don't nobody listen to you because you don't have nothing. Uh, you, you got an anointing, but you don't have no money, so they don't trust you. What? Huh? What is he talking about? So, again, the fact that we lack, people lack financial resources, income, that's supposed to be the means of where we get attention or attract the world. I mean, this, this, is this Simon the Sorcerer reincarnated? Is it, it is this Simon the Sorcerer? Yes! Randy Watson! <laughs> that boy is good. Is it, I mean, what in the, what in the witchcraft is going on here? I mean, this is, this is absolutely asinine. But... Rich and righteous continues because that's what he's trying to attract people with. Not, not the gospel, not Christ, not, not righteousness, not holiness, n God's gracious. None of that money. I don't, I co okay, this, this is hard. This is hard. And some of y'all going to get in your feelings, but I got to tell you the truth is your pastor. The reason why people don't listen to you is because you don't have a track record of success. And sir, you know why we don't listen to you? Because you don't preach. Good God! You don't preach what the Bible says. So we who actually believe what the Bible says, you know, and we who don't tolerate this prosperity gospel heresy, we don't listen to what you say, sir. So keep your funky dollars <laughs> while you're on the way, the broad way. We're on the narrow way, sir. Our chief end it's not money. It's the glory of God. It is his self glory that we we desire. We desire him. Again, keep your money. And if you really hearing from God, why won't God tell you where the money is? If you really hear from God, why ain't you righteous? And we're going to see a bunch of unrighteous guys. We're, we're, we're just start. We're just getting started. We're just getting started. Turn off the lights. I'm going to put some fire in the chat if this message is just hot trash. Matter of fact, go on to put um, the doo-doo emoji if this message is just trash, man. I was listening to this. I was upset listening to this. So apparently the verification of how we know God's listening to us is if we're being showed money. <laughs> I mean, look at the apostles, whether they say in Second uh, Corinthians chapter four uh, that they were poor. They didn't have the, the, the grand grand things of the world. 
I mean, Jesus himself had no place to lay his head. Guess they wasn't hearing from God, right? I mean, this this makes no sense when you actually read the pages of scripture. Your financial status is no determination of your spirituality, whether your poorness or your richness. This is silly. If you really talking to God every day like you say you are, why he won't tell you where the money resides? I oh, and another thing, God isn't a slot machine. Gonna put some gonna put some coins in the chat. God is not a slot machine. Right? He's not just whenever you come up begging, when you come a coming, he's just ready to throw you some cash flow. Come on, DJ Khaled. but you still in an apartment god said no god says i gotta reposition you so that you can represent my interests in the earth i need you to resolve this in your soul that the reason god wants you to have money the reason god wants you to be successful is so that when you start talking people start listening you got to resolve, tap your neighbor, say, you got to resolve that in your soul. You, you got to resolve that, 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 that God wants you in a position where when you start talking about him, people don't tune you out because you don't have anything in your life that says you really have a relationship with God other than some tongues. And half of them tongues is cussing. Yeah. Look at this man. You, sir, you speaking in tongues is no indication of your spirituality, too. What about what about the gospel being the thing that we're giving the world? <laughs> not we can break you off some not 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 the bread in our pocket. Whose pastor is this? Like what? I, I, I was about to say, why do people go to churches like this? But I, I know why. Um, how dare you? How dare you lie on God, sir? But we're not done with the foolishness. I mean, one thing, one thing, um, William Murphy do, he gonna give you a foolish, unbiblical message. That's one thing he gonna do. He good for that. But I know some of you have been keeping up with the Fanny Willis, the Fanny Willis uh, trial, right? And what's been going on with that? Shout out to my man, Dear World Christian, who's been doing content on that. He's been covering the trial, but just to keep it short, she has been, um, being on trial right now for a uh, an inappropriate relationship with a a, a co-worker you know um mr nathan wade and i don't spare you the details but listen to what he says about this uh <laughs> he gives a shout out to fanny the adulterer he wants you to have a voice in city government he wants you to have a a, a, a voice in a state federal government he he wants some of y'all if you had done what you were supposed to do funny willis wouldn't be going through this trial right now because one of y'all would have been the judge and you would have threw it out y'all y'all okay i'm not defending funny I, I yes you are uh, funny like that gray goose i ain't defending funny that that that's my girl though tap your neighbor say you done had some gray goose too though um uh, god, god god said I, I i need some people in place can you imagine what this city would be like if a thousand of us had a voice no, 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 no. yeah imagine a thousand of <laughs> dream center church of atlanta being legislation yeah that's that sounds like a nightmare that sounds like you know one of one some of my friends have been saying atlanta must be stopped and i say amen but i've come up with a new phrase at hell going to put at hell in the chat because this is one big nightmare but look at this man I, I mean what does this have to do with anything what does notice we're still on proverbs <laughs> this got <laughs> this got nothing to do with proverbs sir this ain't got nothing to do with proverbs unless the fool is even wise when he doesn't speak that's a good proverb you should have stayed silent sir but Again, more madness coming. What? And if you were a false teacher, what are some of the things you would promise? Going to put a big house in the chat. Put a, 
put a house emoji in the chat. When you do me a favor, just bump your neighbor, say scoot over, scoot over. Uh, uh, well, my, my, my gift, my gift is making room for me. Y'all, uh, y'all, you didn't bump them, bump them, bump them, bump them, bump. They in your space, bump them. Tell them. Look, if you in church, please don't touch me. Please don't touch me because I'm going to say this. How dare you? Scoot over some. <laughs> Tell them ain't no more room on this road. <laughs> okay, that means God got to give you a bigger dwelling place then. Oh, my goodness. Uh, who, oh, wait. Let me take a praise break for the 50 of y'all. God say where you living is too small. I'm about to. <laughs> this is trash. That was only for 50 of y'all. God say where you living is too small. Yeah, by the end of this year, where you living gonna have your name on it. <laughs> no, 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 no. Now, irony or funny, I remember him saying after the walk it out, you know, remember, you guys remember the walk it out stuff that that uh, New Year service. He promised that actually all of them were going to have at least three houses on their name with their name on. Now he's kind of downgraded and said it's only 50. <laughs> so the so the prophecy is going a little down. Prophesy. 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 But, but again, notice all this is just promising carnal men carnality. You don't have to be spiritual to want any of these things. You just got to be a sinner, a greedy, selfish sinner to want everything he's saying. Because you know what a righteous man would say? Hey, if that happens, amen. Amen. Look, if God grants me a bigger house, amen. But I don't need it. Right. But he he, he mocks that idea. Oh, that you, you're being extra holy. No, it's it's being content. <laughs> you know what you call extra holy is really content. But we're finally going to get back to Proverbs 18, 16. It's been, it's been quite a while, just in case you're wondering. Yeah, it's been a while. You give or what you sow. He says because what the devil wants you to do, do is believe that what you give has nothing to do with the places you get access to. He says the devil wants you to believe that what you give or what you sow has nothing to do with the places you are allowed to go. Uh, but look in the text. The text is clearly teaching us that what you give will determine where you go. Do me a favor. Look at somebody and tell them what you give determines where you go. No, it does not. It does not determine where you go. Again, this is this is a statement of fact, not something you are to do to get it to happen. But rather, I mean, it's just speaking of a general truth. Rich people have greater opportunities. It's not saying give stuff and then you'll get great opportunities. It's not what it's saying. But again, he's reading into the text. Classic, classic William Murphy, though. Some of y'all been denied access because you don't have a gift that gives God a legal justification for making room for you. You know what? You're going to be denied access to heaven because you don't have the gift of salvation. And God doesn't need your funky little giving. He don't need your giving to do it, have legal justification. You, you actually hear what's being said? What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? William Murphy is arguing in order for God to have legal access or justification to act on our behalf, we have to give. This is getting, I mean, it's already been blasphemous. This is blasphemous. This is totally blasphemous. Out of her life. Out of her life. I mean, how, how does people actually go to this church? I'm, again, I'm asking questions I already know the answer to. Ah, but your gift is about to determine where you go. Just throw your hands up and receive this. Or No, matter of fact, what I want you to do is when I say this, if it agrees with your spirit, I just want you to give God a holler. Just, uh, I, I didn't say it yet. Now notice, they know what he's about to promise them some. He's about to promise them some. I got bread in my pocket. They know they are about to get whatever it is. <laughs> they're ready. <laughs> boy, ain't no way, boy. You know? Boy, ain't no way, boy. Because they, they don't care what it is. They know it's material. Because <laughs> what they screamed, he said, sell all you have, right? They would have been like, oh, whoa, oh, whoa, whoa. 
right? Repent and trust in Christ. They, they, oh, that's it. They would have been disappointed. No, 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 no. Right? But they know. They, they, they know their pastor. They know their pastor is, is feeding them into their greed. So they're ready to yell. They don't care what he says. This, see, this is madness. Wait to see what I'm going to say. Oh, and where is the, this theology if, if something agrees with our spirit, then we're, we, can, we can give a little shout of praise. Again, our, 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 us agreeing with something doesn't make it biblical. Again, which is this whole sermon has been unbiblical. First, and y'all, uh, watch this. If this hits your spirit, if this agree with you, Tim, I need you to give God the best shout you can give him. God says, I'm about, because of your obedience, he says, because of your seed, some of y'all ain't even sown it yet, but you got it put away somewhere. You got it in an in a envelope. You, you got it in an account. You didn't pull it out and put it away somewhere. God said, because of your obedience, he said, watch this. If it hits your spirit, I need you to holler. He's, wait. If it hits your spirit, uh, because God is going to respond to your praise twice. He said, watch it. He says, I'm about to give you a way in. I'm going to give you out of life. Out of life. So <laughs> where do you start with this madness? So God's going to respond to their obedience. And, and give them a way in. Now, if you may be wondering, what's this way in? Well, he's going to explain this, but essentially it's going to be more uh, opportunities around celebrities and more opportunities around big name folks that's going to bless you and give you money. I mean, it's just, again, it's the, the end goal is money. I mean, you, you can say anything as long as he promised them money, they're okay with it. I need you to tap two people, tell them God about to give you a way in. He, God about to show you how to get in there. God, God, oh my, and you ain't gonna have to do nothing slick. You ain't gonna have to do nothing illegal. You ain't gonna. But sir, they are doing stuff heretical. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Boy, ain't no way, boy. It may not be illegal by the law of the land. But they are violating God's law by following you, sir. Going to put fires in the chat because that's exactly where his man is leading them to the pit. To do nothing underhanded. You ain't going to have to break nobody off none. You ain't going to have to do nothing crazy. All you going to do is have to get your gift in the ground and your gift is going to make room for you. Do me a favor, bump your neighbor, say scoot over some. My gift is making room. My gift is making room. My gift is making room. I got to get this to you. I got to get this to you. Because God says, not only am I going to show you a way in, he says, I'm, I'm not just going to show you the way. He says, I'm going to give you the wisdom. I'm, I'm going to give you the wisdom. So watch it so that you don't get in there and can't stay in there. <laughs> Throw your hands up, say, Lord, give me the wisdom. Lord, give me the wisdom. Lord, give me the wisdom. Show me what wig to wear. Show me, show me what shoes to wear. Show, show me what pants not to wear. Show me, show me what bra to put on so my, my cleavage ain't off. Bro, what are you talking about, man? Did, did y'all hear that? What? not to wear show me show me what bra to put on so my my cleavage ain't all like I'm you know, just God give me the wisdom so when I get in there just Lord give me the words See, even if I don't necessarily have the vocabulary show me what not to say this man nasty y'all pass the nasty go on, a, go on and put a laptop in the chat because somebody need to check his Check his laptop. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Bro, who cares about the outer appearance? Isn't that the very thing God says he's not? he doesn't care about? But the heart? <laughs> this man is worried about the, the woman's... I don't even want to repeat what he said about the woman. But it, this is terrible. And he ain't done. He ain't done being nasty. 
he going to keep going. Don't let the devil play you. Don't let the devil play you. Don't let the devil play you this week. This ain't the week to be buying new tires. This ain't the week to be buying no oven. This ain't the week to be buying no TV. Matter of fact, from this moment to next Sunday night, you on a spending freeze. You that boy William Murphy gonna have you riding on ball tires. Put some tires in the chat. He said you can't even make no home cooked meal. Put an oven in the chat. I mean, this man gonna have you wrecked out. And yo, <laughs> what he he said he you can't spend no money for a whole week. I mean, it's not even practical. You, you, we gotta buy a bottle of water. You can sorry. You ain't buying nothing until you get your first fruit in the ground. Look at your neighbor because they think I'm talking to you. Let, make sure they know I'm talking to them. You on a spending freeze. You ain't buying nothing. You ain't. I said you ain't buying nothing this week. You ain't my daddy. Yes, I am. I said you ain't buying nothing this week till you get your seed in the ground. Boy, ain't no God way, about boy. to open some doors boy, ain't no for way, you. No, 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 no. She take my money when I'm in need. So, right, people buck up. You ain't my daddy. Yes, I am. He's Zaddy. Zaddy Murphy. No, nah, dog. You, you, you don't have any authority as a pastor to tell people about the needs they may have. <laughs> you don't have this authority to, to dictate people's life. This, it's it's low-key giving cult vibes. I mean, what do y'all think? If you agree, put cult in the chat because this is sounding madness, but... He gonna go on. One thing, one thing Murphy gonna do is keep going on when he wrong. Watch this, Maya. He said, I'm not just opening doors, I'm opening rooms. You ooh-wee, y'all. Oh my God, God about to take you out of them low rooms. God, God about to take you out of them waiting rooms. God, God about to put you in some rooms that look like an award show. Yeah. While I, while I was praying for you last night, God told me to tell you, get, get over being starstruck. He said, because the kind of rooms I'm getting ready to put you in, it's going to look like you at an award show. You're going to be in a room with a whole bunch of famous people, and you can't be in there asking for a selfie. Do, do me a favor, tap your neighbor, tell him you got to act like you've been here before. You got to act like you belong here. Because I, listen, listen, listen. You take selfies with people you don't think you're going to see again. You better hear what I'm saying to you. You de the, the kind of rooms God about to bring you in. Look at somebody tell them, oh, I see you again. <laughs> I mean, I, I've taken selfies with people I, I see. I take with my wife. I mean, so that's not even not even true. But yeah, God's gonna bring you in the door, bring you in them rooms. Well, I feel like I'm in a panic room right now. Cause this is this is insane. Everybody should feel like this in this sermon. But again, Murphy, he gonna give you some more. He gonna give you some more. Gonna put a, a put a dough in the chat if you in that panic room. Oh yes, thank you, Holy Ghost. Uh, y'all don't know it, but y'all y'all used to see. Woo -wee. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Y'all. Y'all used to see a girl walking around here with a camera, belly was about this big. That was, that was, that was Shantae. That's our, our social media manager. She's a part of our staff. She was walking around here. I said, girl, get somewhere and sit down, please. I mean, she, y'all didn't know it, but she was having twins. Y'all didn't know it, but she was having twins. It didn't hit me until just now why they had to come back to church today because God said I'm going to give you two of them I need to look at somebody and tell them you about to birth two of them you, you I'm tired of these men birthing something I'm tired of it no, 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 no. put a baby in the chat because this is, this is wild but how is this woman Having twins supposed to mean for me that I'm going to get double of this blessing, whether it's a house, a, a, a check. I mean, how do you actually prove that? What if her having twins is proof I'm going to get double cursing? I mean, you see, 
you ha- I have just as much justification for that as he does for what he's saying. Because guess what? It's not in the text. Not, none of none about this, you know, Shantae's uh, God bless her and her birth. Right. I, I hope the best for her. Hope she gets out of this church. You know what I'm saying? But that has nothing to do with everybody else getting double of the blessing. It's madness. Ask God for one, but but God about to give you double for your trouble. <laughs> yeah. He going to give you double troubled. This is crazy. This is crazy. Last clip here. We're going to wrap this up. This is crazy, y'all. <laughs> By the way, if you like in this video, not necessarily what he's saying, but, you know, my commentary and exposing this going to give me a like, man. I, you know, I think I've deserved it by putting up with some of this foolery. Let's let's get to this next clip. It's, it's, it happens every year around this time. The crowd starts thinning out because people, they don't believe. Yeah, so this is the what I'm calling gaslight. I'm thinking that's some type of arsonist. Yeah, he's got to gaslight them because, right, he's remember the whole objective in this is to conjole these people to give. Right. So he's just he's just a promise. They're going to be rich. (laughs) Right. So you got to do something for God in return. Now, you can't just scream at the rich part and not want the giving part. Right. So now he's got to He's now that he's hyped them up emotionalize them right he's got them high on this this false dream he's promised this smooth illusion we'll get to that in a second now that he's got them on that now hey look now they gotta give and he knows hey some people have gotten tired of this because they're like man i'm not about to show up for this because he's, he's all he gonna do is just beg for money they don't believe they they some people really do think this is a game some people really do think i'm stealing the money You know how much it cost us, you know how much it cost us to function every month? $314,000. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Boy, ain't no way, boy. It costs your church a month to run $314,000? Now, look, I ain't no mathematician, but you times that every Every month, I mean, my goodness, oh, well, well over a million dollars for William Murphy's church to run and function per year. I mean, well over a couple million, but this is why he need that money so bad. Now we see kind of why he needs that money. My goodness. That's what it takes. That's 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 our bills every month. Three hundred and fourteen thousand dollars. Yeah. Yeah. I want to see where that money's going now. Not me personally, but if I was a part of this church, I would say maybe we're overspending. Couldn't we cut this at least to one hundred thousand? I mean, let's be honest. Most of that money is probably used unnecessarily to fund your music career or something foolish like that. You probably don't need to be spending. I am say probably you don't need to be spending that much money. You know what the average gift is in this room? Fourteen dollars and seventeen cents. That's the average gift. Come on, don't look at me like that. Come on, look at me and smile. Come on, smile. So yeah, how much money would? How many members would? Uh, William Murphy need <laughs> y'all put this in the chat. I ain't good at math. How many members would he need if every what? What do you say the the average? Let's go back. Make sure we get this right. Don't look at me like that. Come on, look at me and smile. Come on. Hold on. Fourteen dollars and seventeen cents. So if fourteen dollars and seven cents is the average someone's giving hold on let me let me pull out my calculator <laughs> let's see you got to do so do you, what do you say Three hundred fourteen thousand is the average divided by 14 we'll say 70 cents hold on let's do that again let's let's do even numbers Three hundred thousand. gonna divide that by hold on that ain't right hold on let me clear it out <laughs> We're going to get this divided by 14. We're going to do even numbers here. He would need over 21,428 members giving. 
some don't seem seem right about how this money uh uh yeah 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 I, I i don't know i don't know that's the average gift come on don't look at me like that come on look at me and smile come on smile while i'm grateful for your 14 dollars and 17 cents if you do the math ain't no way i'm stealing Ain't no way the money going to me. Watch this. Listen to this, y'all. Hard work bought this Gucci. Wait a minute. Was it hard work or you giving money and then God blessing you, giving double, triple? Which one is it, sir? You just got done telling them that's how. Again, it don't make no sense. But watch. The, watch what he says. This is about to get nasty. Hard work bought this Gucci. I done sold everything but booty. No, 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 no. Y'all knew I was gonna say it. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Yeah, they knew you was gonna say it because they know they passed the nasty. They know they passed the nasty. They, they, they know you. But I want to comment. Oh my goodness! Put 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 a put a nasty emoji in the chat. Go whatever is na you think is nasty. Put that in the chat. Look at this. This is this guy. He reminds me of this passage here. Isaiah chapter thirty, verse nine through eleven says, "says For they are a rebellious people, <laughs> lying children, children unwilling to hear the instruction of the Lord." You ever met people like that? You give them Bible, and they want nothing to do with it. They claim to be Christian, right? But notice what they say, who say to seers, do not see and to the prophets, do not prophesy, do not prophesy, prophesy. prophesy. do not prophesy to what us what is right. Speak to us smooth things, right? Prophesy illusions. Leave the way, turn aside from the path. Let us hear no more about the Holy One of Israel. You know, there are some people who don't want to hear what the word of God says. They just want to smooth things, you know, things they want to hear. Right. Who, who is it? The prophet that says you always got something to prophesy bad. I want I want you to prophesy something good. Right. They only want to hear the good things, not the hard things of God. But his message totally contradicted the way we're to give. The pastor's not to, to do this by compulsion. He's not to do this with uh, heavy handedness. Rather, we see Second Corinthians chapter nine, seven through eight says each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly as he was just gaslighting them or under compulsion. For God loves a chill forgiver. Right. See, when it came time to give, they did get a little quiet. He knows that. Right. He knows that. But. Again, um, William Murphy, man, this this guy, man, he has to be one of the worst pastors ever. I mean, I have literally never heard him actually be able to preach a biblical sermon. There's no Christ in his sermons, no gospel. It is all materialism. It is the 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 gospel of self that you hear from William Murphy. And it sells, unfortunately, in a lot of churches. But praise be to God that he has his remnant. He has his elect. He has his people who have not bowed the knee to William Murphy. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Till the next time, grace and peace. Yo, grace and peace. Thank you for watching another episode of All Things Theology. If you enjoyed what you heard today, go on and give me a like. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell. I promise to give you weekly lives, videos, interactions, exposing false teachers, sharing with you, the viewer, my theological beliefs, things about the culture and the Bible. So if you're here for that, come on and join us. Also, if you would like to support this channel financially, you can do so by becoming a Patreon member or a YouTube member. Links are in the description below. You can see content before it drops. You can also have Q&A sessions with also other Patreon members, YouTube members as well. So if you would like that, hit the description link in below.